Welcome to the No News Just Facts podcast. This is episode 56 on the check-in. Hello, how are you? I hope everybody is having a wonderful day, evening, uh, afternoon. Um, Shout out to all the people going to work. Shout out to all the people coming back from work. Shout out to all the people who work from home. Shout out to all the people who own their own business. Uh, Truckers. Uh, whatever, what have you. Shout out to all of y'all. And now, it is time to get in to my life lesson opener. The worst way of dealing with childhood trauma is to bottle it up. Before moving on from these childhood experiences, you have to make sure you are okay with the experiences. The experiences we have during childhood have a significant impact on our later life. Speaking of this, I'd like to go through a point of parenting from my own childhood. The average the average American at some point learn from the time during adolescence about the traits of manhood versus womanhood sex to be exact the culture and heritage matter in the moment of topics such as this I'm Nigerian and Nigerian parents have a very strict structure of rearing everything with their children almost feels like a dictatorship Every Nigerian parent parent's prayer is that their offspring succeed and will go the extra mile to see this become a reality. A type of paranoia is struck upon you as well, almost. Anxiety, fear, sunken in the shadows, not to mention how hard they come down on you if you're not getting all A's. But I get to thinking about how my mother nor my father ever gave me the talk you know the talk the birds and the bees that talk i've never i never got that i never got that talk um it feels like it's awkward for nigerian parents to speak to their children about sex it's like i'm not comfortable telling my child how they came into the world but see the overprotectiveness of Nigerian parents makes up for that. And once Nigerian kids jump off the porch, it's fair game. The closest thing I ever got to a talk is when two of my uncles sat me and my two other cousins down and basically told us in so many words that we shouldn't marry any black American woman, it should be a Nigerian woman to be married. Um, granted, one of my uncles was like going through a, a divorce, so I believe a lot of his advice was coming from a place of anger and frustration at the time. But my other uncle, rest his soul, rest in peace, who was who was uh up until the time he passed married to my aunt um who is in fact black american i never paid attention because i wasn't thinking about as a young underdeveloped youth getting married i was worried about cartoons i was worried about playing the ps2 i was worried about going outside and playing and you know i mean you know it wasn't really on my mind like that um but i kind of felt a sort of way like 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 later on in my life i felt i kind of like reassessed that situation kind of felt the way like damn i can't believe these grown men are like telling us like what specific like black what specific race to be with or what specific race to like marry you know, um, uh, we had no idea about being married. Like I said, like, 
Um, in a in a Nigerian household, Nigerian parents don't apologize for any wrongdoing or anything like that. So these are just like characteristics that I'm trying to like put you in my mind. It like puts you in my shoes just to like let you know. Like there's a lot of things that you would like think are odd that I had to like deal with when I was growing up. Um, they don't like Nigerian parents don't apologize, but they more so like do it subliminally, like through like, like if my mom ever wanted to like make up for like a situation where she like yelled at me or made like a comment or something like that or anything like that, she would just like do it through like, I don't know, like sometimes it'll be like, oh, do you want, I stopped and got you some food. Like it, it's never, it's never really a sorry involved. It's just like, I'll do it through this or I'll do it through that. It's never really like anything where it's like a direct apology. And I even, I experienced that with my uncles too. Like um, one of my uncles, like he won't say sorry, but like he'll just, you know, I don't know. He find his own way of like, you know, doing it subliminally. Like Nigerian parents are like very subliminal about apologies to their children if they like did something wrong. Um, It's almost kind of like a coded language, if you will. Um, I don't want to live on this topic for too long, but I was just trying to like give you like some sort of like structure from my uh, from my world, at least a little bit, I guess. Um, but yeah, man, we, we got a lot to uh, cover. So we're going to I'm going to get into the topics I got for today. Let's, uh, let's keep it moving. So if you've been taking a look at the internet, you will see that there is a trend of uh, something that has to do with people spelling out things and money, right? Uh, it started with NBA Youngboy basically telling, um, I don't know, I don't know, it, basically sending like an, 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 an a subliminal message to whoever I guess um and it basically said uh what did it say I, I gotta look it up real quick um it said something along the lines of you niggas gonna die that's basically what it said and then it, it went from just him saying it to Lil Dirk um sending a subliminal message to and sending it to whoever and saying hurry y'all bitch ass up right um and the internet basically turned this into like a funny little thing or whatever and turned it into whatever they turned it into right i'm not gonna speak on the two rappers that it, it started with because um I don't know, man. I just, I just think that two successful rappers beefing with each other and crews basically beefing with each other, you know, allegedly is just, it's dumb, but I can't really talk about it because I'm not, I'm not really like a big fan of either one of them like that. Um, and then even if I was a big fan of either one of these rappers, I, I'm just a fan. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm like. I'm not part of the immediate crew of, of of Lil Durk, and I'm not a part of the immediate crew of NBA YoungBoy. But I see what like influence they have. Like, look at how many people have followed suit after YoungBoy spelled out something with money. Like, it's like it went from. It went from rappers just holding money in their hand to rappers having the money phone. Y'all remember the money phone, right? Went from the money phone to the money spread to the katana spread. And now here we are with spelling out just whatever in money. Like it's um it's a high level of ignorance here. Um and yeah, uh, it's just it's it's ignorance to me. 
spelling out stuff and money like i don't see bill gates taking money out the bank and and going to go spell something i don't see elon musk taking his money out the bank to go spell something like just ignorance it always lands it always lands back in our court with something like with something of ignorance you know or at least something of this magnitude like spelling out stuff and money yeah it's funny but at the same time it don't y- y'all don't get that that thought in your mind like you making it too easy for those those you know some of those racist people to like laugh at y'all you know it's like it's, it's making it easy for those record executives to 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 laugh like it's making the the, the big wigs on the internet it's making it easier for them to laugh like ha 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 laughing at laughing at the things that are like basically making us look ignorant like i don't know if anybody's really like thinking about that but i mean i I guess it's a cool trend for what it is but like i said i think it's i just think it's ignorant i think um i think it's ignorant and i think it's funny at the same time so it's like i'm with it but i'm not with it but uh but then again i wouldn't go if i had the, the amount of money to where I could like pull it out the bank and just spread it I wouldn't do it you know, even like you even got people uh, spelling stuff and change which is funny as hell to me but at the same time you know there, there's a there's a hindsight you gotta look at there's a there's a long run of this that you have to like really look at you know but hey you know it's, it's, it's a cool trend however long it lasts it's funny Moving on, man. I ain't going to stay too long on this topic. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got we to gotta talk about it. We have to. Why not? We're going to talk about power. Power. What is that? Power Book 2 Ghost. Um, I wasn't. Oh, when this show first came out, I wasn't all the way sold on it, to be honest with you. Um, it took me a while to get into it because I'm like, it was kind of like a little predictable. A little bit i guess at first I, I, I it made me not want to like pay attention so much because i mean i already do not like the character of Tariq. i hate like i hated him in the original power i hate i i really wanted him to be the one to get killed i wanted him to die i, I wanted him to be deceased and i wanted ghost to still be alive which i'm gonna get into a theory about that about i think he's still i think ghost is still alive um, but yeah, let's get into this Tejada family drama, if you will. Diana Tejada, bro. Man. She done let everybody have it. She was on the court doing damage control. First, she ratted out Kane and said that he's the one who sugared the coke and became the new connect, right? that's first of all then not only that we 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 just get started not only that then she told on drew to her dad for not uh killing his uh you know his lover or whatever which i thought was funny when he was like oh uh i forgot dude's name uh everett oh so everett is still with us when he said that i died laughing (laughs) I died laughing. He's like, oh, so Everett is still with us, right? That's not even it, man. That's not even it. This is where, bro, she was she was driving a lane. She was going, she was, she was shooting shots from outside. But this is where it gets just personal. This this one was personal. So in the beginning of the episode, Diana was like snooping around, looking for, basically looking for like zeke's birth certificate because monet wasn't telling her nothing i believe if i remember correctly she wasn't telling her anything or uh, whatever um but i guess she had overheard her on the phone or something like that right so she went snooping in her room looking for a birth certificate by the way why the hell is it so accessible for you to find for you to find like i guess the number to the hospital that uh, he was born at and the birth certificate and everything like that they just giving that out to anybody that's that's i 
I find that to be odd. That's a little weak with the uh, as far as like the writing department goes. I don't know why they did it like that. And then there was a song playing. It was just the most random song. I don't even know the name of the song. But it was just they had this random ass song playing during Diana uh, being Snoopy and going through Monet's room, right? So back to the dinner, the Tejada dinner, right? Bro, oh my goodness. So Zeke is already mad that Drew was supposed to kill or take out uh his his lover, uh Drew's lover who is Everett that you know Lorenzo his father told him to kill or take out, right? So he's already mad about that. Zeke is already mad about that. He's like, bro, you why you tried to kill my teammate? Bro, like what the hell? And then Monet goes and says, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know about you and Tariq, and I know, and I know you was up there, and I know you was up there at his court trial and all that other stuff, and that's how I knew you was being a groupie up there, and that's how I know you was, I, I, that's how I know you was fucking him, right? Man, man, don't it's kind of like, don't you wish you could have took that back and not said that because <laughs> Diana had a whole cannon for her." She turned around and said, well, well, daddy, uh, she, 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 uh, she motioned to Lorenzo and was like, well, daddy, I'm not the only one around here fucking something. And then she just basically just said, hey, yeah, uh, Zeke, listen, yeah, basically we, I, I know you fucking, I know you fucking on uh, some dude named Loren, uh, some dude named Dante. And then not only that, she went on and said, and then Zeke was trying to leave and she and uh Monet was like, oh no, don't leave. And she was like, nah, yeah, stay, Zeke. Cause I I, I think she she wants you to stay because that's that's your mama. That's your mom, like that's your mama, and 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 Dante is your daddy. And he he had like the most puzzling face in the world. And he was like, No, that no, he's not my dad. No, he's not, he's not my dad. Ain't that right, Auntie? And Diana just kept up. Di Diana kept her foot on the gas. And she was like, Zeke, you dumbass. Basically, that's your mama right there. She is not your auntie. And bro, like, he's basically not even thinking about that. He's like, so, so I violated NCAA regulation? Like, bro, fuck the, <laughs> fuck the NCAA right now. Nigga, that's your mama. <laughs> that's your mama. You worried about NCAA in basketball, nigga. Wait, this lady you've been calling auntie for like the longest is your mama, bro. Like, come on, dog. Like, make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense, bro. You like that? That's your mama. You been calling her auntie, and then she been lying to you about your about your age, and you ain't even figure it out. I see why everybody make fun of Zeke on this on this show, like, for not being bright. And being slow because <laughs> that moment was the that moment was hilarious and then he left and uh basically monet went looking for him you know lorenzo told her to get lorenzo told monet to get out right and she basically went to go look for him um it's not really anything else i could really point out from this episode besides the fact that uh Drew finally bucked up and just finally like took somebody out, took out a GTG member, uh, the GTG member with the uh, with the braids or whatever. He actually like took him out. That was I thought that was crazy. Um, but, 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 but. Oh yeah, and then they set up Dante and they set up Dante in order to in order for Tariq to get uh, to get to get all of uh basically he he basically took the the diamond ring that Dante was going to use to pretty much propose to Monet and use that as a payment to uh his lawyer Davis Davis McLean and yeah I think the only I, I don't know if there's anything else I could really say that uh, but yeah that man Dante went crazy bro <laughs> 
<laughs> man, that Dante went crazy when he figured out that uh he went crazy when he figured out that somebody went and like basically stole his stuff. Right? So uh I think what is it? They, I, I think Drew got to Drew got to Lorenzo's house. Not Lorenzo. Drew got to Dante's house and he was basically about to leave. And that's right about the time when the chef got to his uh, his apartment and was there. And Kane basically did this uh, diversion and got him to get out of there. And Drew was able to get out of there with their stash. Basically, Dante's stash. You know, th there was two different, like, ways they, they went about it but if you watch it you'll see it I'm not really gonna give out everything. too much else but my only other thing here is like I got two other things and I'm gonna just leave this whole entire episode alone here's one thing I, I want to know and and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep it real like how the hell does Tariq got this much riz bro like how does he have this much riz dog like how is he able to pull Lauren Effie and Diana, like, dog, this is crazy. Like, how, dog? Like, he's a snot nose ass kid, bro. Like, what the? Hey, like, is it because he's a bad? Is he? Is that? Is it because he's like a bad boy or something like that? Is that? Is that why they? Why these three women are hunched up on him so crazy? I don't even understand that. And then, and then Sax. Oh, I forgot about him. He's stupid as hell. He's stupid as hell. Dry snitching to the to the uh, what it? What is it? The uh, the defending lawyer or whatever the defendant. Uh, the the lawyer who's who's trying to basically take down, uh, who's basically trying to take down Tariq. He given her information. I thought I thought the I thought the scene with uh Davis and Tariq in his office and, and bro was like, cause he has like the uh, Lauren basically recorded him. Uh, basically recorded him saying a whole bunch of incriminating stuff and it landed in the hands of I think the judge or whatever and the judge gave it to Davis to like I guess listen to and they're in the office and bro is like uh, uh Tariq is like yo like could you like play that for me so I could see like you know who it is and what I said on tape and he's like bro if I press play, you know what I'm saying? If I press play, that's my ass. That's the end of my uh, practice and everything like that. He's like, you got me fucked up. And then Tariq is like, but, but he's getting up the lead. Like Davis is getting up the lead. And then he's like, but bro, I, he's like, but I, you know, I, let me listen to it. He's like, he gives him that. He's like, he's like, I'm going. He's like, I'm going out here to get some paper. I'll be right back. Stupid ass doesn't, doesn't know that that's, that's the, you know that's the cue to listen to the day of tape but uh, i thought that was funny and um i don't think there's anything else that i really thought was like interesting oh yeah i thought the uh i thought uh sax saying uh please don't do <laughs> please don't do anything please don't do anything james saint patricky i thought that was funny as hell but uh other than that man yeah that was the uh the dinner was like the biggest bombshell of the whole entire episode bro that's like the most interesting thing and then it's that and then them going to go basically steal from uh basically steal from dante or mecca everyone you want to call them uh and then what else what else what else, what else? oh yeah the scene where uh monet goes to see monet goes to see uh carrie milgram and basically at the end of it you know so so and so forth happens and i'm telling you right now zeke is gonna put his hands on monet in the next episode like he's gonna put hands feet and arms on her in the next episode like bro she going she she going down a a a, a rabbit hole she's not supposed to be going down because uh zeke zeke is, who knows who knows how zeke is once when when he's mad for real for real like i just figured out my auntie is my mom now now he about to figure out that 
Miss Milgram's dead. Miss Milgram is dead, or Miss Milgram has passed away. Yeah, man, it, it's about to be something crazy. It's about to be crazy. But yeah, thought it was a decent episode. Um, I, I'm, I'm just ready for whatever is about to happen next in the next episode. It's got me hooked now. I don't think I. I don't really think that this this show is any better than Power. I still think the original show Power is is better that show everything that happened in that show was you know it was dope um, for what it was and then raising Kanan is already like I love that show I love that show and then there's what uh whenever they come back they're gonna have uh a young ghost and a young Tommy oh my gosh you can only imagine what that's gonna be like young ghost young Tommy uh what's it what's it called young Angela Whew! it's gonna be crazy I can't wait I can't wait for raising Kanan to come back I don't know how I feel about the the new uh, what is it the new Tommy Tommy's uh, what is it uh, book was that book four power book four force I think that's what it's called and then they're gonna give uh, they're gonna give uh, Tate a spinoff and it's gonna be called influence to see his rise as a uh, as a politician I feel like that one's gonna be interesting because you know see how dirty of a person he is and what he had to do like as a police officer because he was a police officer before he was a politician just to see how he was a police officer that that'll be yeah man episode was pretty dope we're moving on from this and we're going to be talking about two this Dr. Dre saying, who can go against Eminem in a versus? Listen, I'm going to take my time with this one because yet again, we are being tricked. I'm tired of all of the rappers that were influenced by all of the rappers who are in the top five. All of the rappers who are in everybody's top five who are still making money and breathing today respectfully coming out and doing this jay-z did it last jay-z did it like a, a few weeks ago and said i'm untouchable can't nobody mess with me in a versus and i retorted and i listed a bunch of people who i thought could definitely touch him in a versus now here's the thing every time these dang these dang our favorite artist, your favorite rapper, whatever, comes out and says something like this, who can touch him or whatever. It never amounts to anything. It never builds up to anything. You, we know damn well Eminem ain't gonna go do no verses. He ain't doing it. He not doing it. If Dr. Dre ain't doing the verses, Eminem is definitely not doing no verses. But I have went ahead and just gone through I thought this was more, I thought this was appropriate to do. Eminem has a list of his favorite rappers of all time. Now, I don't know if we're going off of technicalities, like, like, are, are we going off of skill or are we going off of hits? Because if we're going off of skills, I definitely think that Royce the 5'9", that's first of all, Eminem's good friend, who he's known for a long time, can beat Eminem in a verse. If we're talking about skill, if we're talking about uh, uh, rhymes, soliloquies, sil uh, syllables, punches, whatever, Royce the Five Nine is like the first on the list to me who can beat Eminem in a versus. If we're talking about hits, LL is definitely somebody who should go against Eminem. Why? Because he is influenced by LL Cool J. It's perfect. LL Cool J could play his first three albums against uh, against Eminem's first what Eminem's first three al Eminem's first three albums versus LL Cool J's first three albums. That would be fire. I would watch that. I would pay for that. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, if we're talking about hits, um, why not? Let me see here. Why not? have Jay-Z up there. I have my thoughts about Jay-Z, but shoot, Jay-Z and Eminem, that would be crazy. But we know that'll never happen. Jay-Z ain't about to do no verses. 
let alone Eminem doing any verses. That would be interesting, though. That would be the interesting to watch. Uh, Wayne is another one talking about hits with a little bit of talking about hits and skills together. Eminem versus Wayne? That would be crazy. That would be crazy. I would, I would like, I would do, if they threw this in a stadium, I would like want to go to watch that. I would want to go to watch that. I would pay for that. I would dress up for that. That would be fire to see. Let's see. That's two people I just named. I just think I named yeah, three people. So it's Royce the Five Nine, LL, uh, Jay Z, and Lil Wayne. So that's four people that could go against him. And then the last one, I mean, because this is a like Eminem's list of his favorite rappers of all time is like it's a it's a list of like seventeen rappers. So I would actually say Nas could go against Eminem. Nas versus Eminem would be pretty pretty dope. Be pretty dope for me just in the skill set factor um as far as like rhyming patterns and such that would be dope as hell to see Nas versus Eminem in a versus battle and a lot of these I wouldn't even do no type of like thing where like anybody wins because it would just be cool as shit to see Eminem standing on stage playing music playing hit like playing his hits or even performing his hits it would be dope to see Eminem on the same stage with Nas and they just basically going hit for hit it would be dope to see LL on stage with Eminem them going back and forth with songs classic songs some of those songs came out before I was alive but still like with LL Cool J I mean um, but still that would be fire as hell um who else? I, I, Andre 3000 would be cool. I mean, but it's like, with him, it's like more of like, he'd be playing like verses. Like, cause he, he doesn't, he only has like one solo album. So it's like, it's kind of hard with that one, to be honest with you. Uh, Rock him. Big Daddy Kane has already been in the verses. So I wouldn't, I would take him off just, just for that fact. Uh, Let's see here. You got Red Man too. That would be interesting too. Even though he's been in a versus with, with Method Man, um, I, Rock him versus Eminem would be crazy too. Just to see the teacher and the student. Like some of Eminem's favorite rappers are people he patterned his style after, or emulated the style that he listened to into his own rhyming pattern, or his or his style of. Uh, performance so it would just be cool to see rock him versus eminem that would be dope to me i ain't gonna lie it would be i don't know it, it would just be dope to see but i mean i it's I, it's likely that a versus will happen and you know buster rhymes is another one that i think would be pretty sick to hear you know seeing buster rhymes on the same stage with eminem would be cold as hell course like i said on eminem's and i don't think i don't i don't think it's it's uh it's in the books or in the cards that it's gonna happen so we will just keep holding our breath and crossing our fingers to see if this will actually happen so doordash is requiring all employees to now make one delivery a month the delivery service DoorDash is making all its employees, even the CEO, deliver at least once a month. But now, not everyone is happy about the initiative, and some employees have turned to an anonymous employee's social platform to vent. According to Insider Under, it's WeDash program employees, including those in Dash corporate offices, must serve a delivery drivers must serve as delivery drivers at least once a month if they can't deliver they can choose other experiences such as shadowing customer service staff one doordash employee who reported a total revenue compensation of four hundred dollars complained about the doordash initiative on the anonymous employee social platform blind in a post titled doordash making engineers deliver food so basically what it seems as though here is uh 
the only people not doing any delivering is well actually everybody has to deliver at least once a month so they're making the people in the offices and the people who are already driving deliver once a month which is crazy because you that like a lot of people make their living off of doordash it's like they were already like doordash doordash people were already being uh unfairly done with uh what is it called they had some other issues going on um if i just look for it real quick but like that's just crazy that now just to like the one uh if i could like look it up just to see one dash a month oh wait did i say four hundred dollars it's four thousand four hundred thousand dollars okay it was four hundred thousand dollars all right it says four hundred thousand dollars complained about the doordash initiative on the anonymous employee social platform blind in a post titled doordash making engineers deliver food mandatory we dash starts from next year you need a dash once a month we'll be tracked in performance reviews what the actual i didn't sign up for this there was nothing in the offer letter job description about this the post has generated 1600 comments since december 19th blind confirmed to the insider that the original post was from a doordash employee the platform requires users to sign up using their work email addresses and continues to verify their employment occasionally. Not acceptable in any way. A blind user who works at eBay commented. And most of us would wave bye bye. <coughs> but some DoorDash employees came to the program's defense. Most of my coworkers and I are excited. DoorDash pays well and I get to better understand what I'm working on and hopefully improve the experience for our dashers. A DoorDash user posted on Blind. Another DoorDash employee said he didn't think the task was as big a deal as the original poster, but that this should have been in place in the job description of people's employment contract. Seriously, they're paying you 400K and want you to deliver food once a month so you can actually experience your product and you're complaining? What was wrong with you? Posted a user. Oh, okay, they want you to deliver they want you to deliver once a month and get 400 400,000. That's not bad. That's not bad if I think about it like that. If you if you only have to deliver like one time and you get 400,000 like doing that? I would take that. A DoorDash spokesperson said the WeDash program had been around since the company's inception, but it was paused during the pandemic. It's now being reinstated. The sentiment of the employee on blind is not a reflection of the employee base at large. The spokesperson added. So it's basically, from what I'm to believe, your performance will be tracked and you have to deliver once a month um originally i believe it was a thing where um you either delivered or you don't you either delivered or you don't have to deliver and you still make money like that's kind of how it is with uh, another delivering platform uh, favor in which you can be on the clock or like you can be doing it for a certain amount of hours and not deliver and still make money as opposed to now with DoorDash, they're basically saying, we're not doing that anymore. You have to at least deliver one time to get some money. We're not just gonna hand you money for free. And I think they figured out that people were glitching the system. So this is why I believe that they went ahead and put this in place for people who aren't really delivering at all. So um, if it's actually a compensation of four hundred thousand dollars, and you only have to deliver it once, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, I guess maybe that's the cap off. That's probably the cap of uh, time. They they probably just have a cap on it that that probably would makes it like 
more to where it's you know because people you know people make a living using doordash or delivering with doordash so you know some people's money could be getting messed up you know some people probably bring in i don't know maybe six thousand six thousand in two weeks or something like that or maybe even more than that in like two weeks and now they have to settle for what is being distributed to them through a new system that is in place so um i guess you get i guess for people out there who do doordash uh how i would i would venture to wonder how any of you guys feel about it um, that's all i got to say because i mean i used to do the food delivery thing i was doing uber eats but i wasn't i i wanted to try doordash but i was like eh, it's too much involved with that and then they don't you know you have to wait you have to wait for it and all this other stuff that factor into me not really doing doordash so but uh moving right along all right so jay-z and meek mill are supporting a bill that could end rap lyrics from being used as criminal evidence it says uh the two rappers are joined by other rappers such as kelly Rowland, robin thick fat joe and big sean and urging lawmakers to sign the rap music on trial bill and make it the law of the land the purpose of the legislation is to place limits on admissibility of a defendant's music as evidence shown during a criminal trial according to the draft legislation the bill would require prosecutors to provide clear and convincing evidence that a defendant's songwriting is literal rather than figurative, figurative, figuratively or fictional in a letter signed by the musicians jay-z's attorney alex spiro and University of Richmond professor Eric Nielsen argue that reform is urgently needed. Rather than acknowledge rap music as a form of artistic expression, police and prosecutors argue that the lyrics should be interpreted literally. In the words of one prosecutor, as an autobiog autobiographical journal. Even though the genre is rooted in a long tradition of storytelling that privileges figurative, figurative language is steep in hyperbol hyperbolic and employs all of the same poetic devices we find in more traditional works of poetry the letter read the tactic effectively denies rap music the status of art and in the process gives prosecutors a dangerous advantage in the courtroom the letter continues by presenting rap lyrics as rhymed confession of illegal behavior they are often able to obtain convictions even when other evidence is lacking. Back in November, Senator Brad Holyman, Senator Jamal Bailey, and Assembly Member Catalina Cruz first proposed the measure and it passed through the New York Senate Codes Committee on Tuesday. The bill is expected to receive a full vote on the Senate floor. Our lyrics are a creative form of self-expression and entertainment just like any other genre we want our words to be recognized as art rather than weaponized to get convictions in court fat joe told rolling stone on tuesday i hope the governor and all the lawmakers in new york take our letter into consideration protect our artistic rights and make the right decision to pass this bill senator bailey said the bill would make it a prerequisite for prosecutors to show a strong factual nexus between the art and the facts of the case instead of using their music to promote their own agenda presuming it's a defendant's guilt based solely on musical genre or creative expression is analytical to foundational rights and perpetuates the systematic racism that is embedded into the criminal justice system throughout the discriminatory confirmations of hip-hop and rap with criminality well, um, I can just say this, that it's almost kind of unfair that it only happens to one genre of music, that being rap and hip hop music, that is a predominantly black American genre, um, that is not 
all solely based on things of bad, things uh, ignorant things and gangsterism and everything like that. Um, but rock and roll itself has a lot of things that are said in their music that just I don't hear I don't hear uh, Axl Rose going to jail for something he said in his music. You know, um, it's really a disservice and disadvantage for a lot of rappers to have to deal with the fact that if they ever get in trouble, their time in court may involve a moment where your rap lyrics may be used as evidence against you. Um, and if that's the case, it would have to mean that like one part, like a subgenre of rap would have to go and that would be gangster music. Gangster music would have to be like obliterated in order for in order for there to be an end to like rap lyrics not being used in court cases. Because I mean if you look back in history and see who went to jail for their rap lyrics uh, what was the guy's name? X-Rated rapper from uh, I believe from like Sacramento who went to jail for stuff that he said on record um, and I believe there was some crime committed to or something like that I believe uh, and there's another rapper I can't for the life of me remember his name but he is currently serving life for something for some things he said on record like it's so weird like that there are people who are in jail for their lyrics and then again on the other side of it it's like you don't know what's real and what's not real you don't know if if it's just like if a song that you hear is just a song uh versus if it was true life oh i venture to wonder like why can't in the why can't in the courtroom why can't there be a lie detector test why can't a person be why can't if they if a rapper is in trouble and he's being uh brought up on whatever why can't they have a lie detector on on said song that they're gonna use to try to like bury the rapper like all this stuff you said in this song is it real or was it just fictionalized that'll tell you whether they're te that'll tell you whether it's it's a real thing or not I don't, I don't I don't necessarily know if the bit like if this bill is gonna be able to like reflect everywhere but I mean if it reflects in New York that's a start you know it, it, that's, a, that's a start that's a good start um, and then eventually maybe you could just spread out to other states or whatever and you know some so th this this bill could save a lot of like musicians rappers whatever would have you you know um yeah uh i think uh if i remember correctly if i remember correctly uh what's that dude's name ynw melly went to it is has been in jail because of a song he made and they linked that to a crime and that's where he's at now because of that doesn't mean doesn't like i don't know if that means he you know it's it's all alleged i don't know if that means that he did that you know but you can only you know only like i said only time will tell how long whether this whether it goes through and whether it it, it works for you know uh whether whether it works for in the favor of the musician in the justice system, we can only we can only um, we can only cross our cross our fingers to see what will happen.